Hey everyone, Vincent here from VincentWin.com and today in this video tutorial, we're going to be focusing on audio reaction and how to incorporate this using Chepcode Form. Now some of you guys may know, Chepcode Form is widely known to be used as an audio visualization tool for many music videos, commercials, and movies. So basically, I'm here to teach you guys how to set this up using Chepcode Form in After Effects so we can get our audio reaction working with Form today. So before I ramp preview this, just pay attention to the waveform down here and see how it reacts pretty well. So I'm going to ramp preview this right now. So as you can see, our audio lines up with our form layer pretty well, you know, we can visualize our audio with our frequencies and all that stuff through form. So let's teach you how to set this up. The first thing you want to do is import your audio clip into After Effects. Once you have your audio clip imported in After Effects, drag the audio clip down to the new composition button down here. And what this does is it easily creates a composition with the same length as your audio clip. So if you want to visualize your whole audio clip, you know, at least you have a composition that's the same size, same same length as your audio clip, which is pretty crucial. So what we want to do now is create our form layer. So create a new solid, Control Y or Command Y on the Mac, and we're going to name it Form. And then we're going to apply Form into this layer. So search in Form in the Effects and Preset. Under Trap Code, drag in Form into the layer. So now we have our default form. We're going to go down to the base form right here and change some parameters. We want to change the particle in Z to 1. We only want one grid of particle. We don't want three. And I'm going to decrease the size from 200 to 170 on both the X and Y. So, you know, we get a smaller size of particles just to work with for rendering purposes. And know that I am working in half resolution right now, so it's rendering a little bit faster. If you, if you set it to full, it's going to take a little longer to render because it's higher quality. And we're pretty much done with the base form for now. Let's scroll down to the fractal field. I'm going to give our net right here, our grid, a little more diversity. So I'm going to go ahead and displace this grid a little bit. So increase the displacement until you get a nice displacement, around 50. So we get this nice bending. And we also want our particles to flow. So when our audio is not driving our particles around, moving it around and all that stuff, we want our particles to flow by default. So I want my particle grid to grow and flow upwards. So I'm going to decrease the flow in Y. To around negative 50 as well so it's going to flow upwards when it's not moving and then we're just going to set the flow evolution down to about 25 because we do not want our particles to be flowing too fast because we want our moving to be controlled by our audio layer and the fractal field should be done and go ahead and change the size to about one so the fractal field affects our particle size and then we can go up here to the audio react tab and this is where all the magic happens the first thing you want to do is set your audio layer to the audio layer that you want to react with. So in my case, it's audio the voyage. That's our audio. And by default, nothing really happens. We need to set the map to. And basically what the map to is, is the action that form takes. So if we set the map to to fractal, the audio is going to affect our fractal field. If we set the reactor one map to to disbursement, it's going to affect the disbursement. So for now, for reactor one, keep in mind that we have five reactors here. So we can set five different factors in our audio controlling abilities. So we're going to set our reactor one to map to fractal. So right now, reactor one is going to affect a fractal field through the audio. And of course, we have some basic parameters right here. We have the strength, which is pretty much controlling how much it actually affects our grid of particles, threshold width, and frequency. Now, you may want to play around with the frequency depending on how how high pitched your audio is and all that stuff. So just play around with the frequency. It varies on each audio and play around with the strength basically. And if we just ran preview this right now, you can see that our audio actually reacts with our form layer. Now it's not really that big of a difference. It's a pretty subtle effect. So you may want to go back up to the reactor one and increase the strength right now temporarily to 150 so we can see a more drastic contrasted change. We can also set a second reactor, so let's go down here and set the reactor 2 to maybe a disperse. So the audio also drives the fractal field as well as the disbursement. Now by default, nothing's going to happen right now because, you know, none of our particles are dispersed, so there's nothing to disperse. 
So let's go ahead and scroll down to the disbursement right here. Disperse and twist and go ahead and turn on the disbursement to about one. So now that we have something to disperse, our reactor one can actually change the disbursement now that we have some disbursement going on. And maybe set the strength to maybe 200. And go ahead and ramp PV this again. So essentially, that's the pretty much core on how to set up audio reaction with form. Now, of course, you can go to a more in detail, thorough uh, process to, you know, make this more visually pleasing and make it look a lot better than this. But this is essentially the core on how to make audio reaction happen with form. So now this is not going to be a tutorial on how to make this look pretty or anything like that. But, you know, we can go ahead and jump to some pretty basic stuff to make this look a little bit better. We're not going to go into that many details on how to make this look amazing and beautiful. But, you know, we can see what we can do right now. So the first thing we want to do is go maybe go down to the spherical field right now. Open that up. And for sphere one, we're going to apply a pretty medium, small strength. And that adds a nice circle in the middle, a pretty a hole in there. And then we want to increase our radius. So our hole gets a little bit bigger and it takes shape of our, our grid layer here. And pretty much just play around with the strength and radius to get a nice circle. Something around there, nice and small. We can also visualize the field so we know how it's being shaped and everything like that. And then if we ran preview this or we scrub through this, you can see that, you know, our sphere is being affected and it looks pretty cool. And of course, again, since we added a spherical field, our displacement isn't that noticeable. It's pretty subtle. So if you scroll up to reactor one again under audio react, reactor one, remember it, reactor one was our fractal field. So if we increase the strength to about, you know, 250 or something, we get more of a change right here. Let me get some of our disbursement. We can also go up to the particles tab and maybe change some parameters in our particle. Maybe instead of a plain white form particle layer, maybe we can make it, you know, somewhat of a light blue. Something like that. Still a pretty subtle effect. So what we can do, I think, is go use another reactor. So let's go down to the audio react and open reactor three, which we haven't used yet, three out of five. And let's map this to the spherical strength because, you know, we use the, the spherical strength now. And so already we see a nice change in our composition window right here. And you may want to play around with the strength again. So I'm just going to scrub through this and see how well this is going. And by default, it looks pretty good. You may want to mess around with the strength again in the radius of our spherical field. But now our audio, our audio layer affects our disbursement, our fractal, as well as our spherical field, our strength. So now our sphere gets larger when the audio gets louder, essentially. And maybe we can play around with the strength to about 120. Again, the change is so subtle right now. So maybe reactor one, maybe 350. So we get more of a fractal difference. Yes, like that. And now we can also apply, you know, shine to this. Now, sometimes I like to use shine as a replacement for the glow filter because sometimes shine gives you an, a nicer result. Now, if you change the transfer mode to add, and increase the boost light and decrease the wavelength. Already you get this nice subtle glow effect with a little streak at the end. And of course we can go to the colorize tab and change the shadows to a nice blue color to match our scene. And change the midtones to a medium blue around here. And of course, if you want to top that off, you can always apply another glow. Drag that in there. Play around with the threshold so it's not as hot. Maybe decrease the radius a little bit. And then you can also apply another shine layer to give it an overall effect. I'm just going to ram PV this because I think it looks pretty decent. So I think the intensity of everything is a little bit too bright. Maybe decrease the boost light a little bit, a little lower, and maybe change the ray length to 0.1, so we don't see too much of that. 
Of course, you can always add a particular in the background, optical flares, nose lens factory, nose light factory. And you can do a whole bunch with this, but this is essentially the core and how do you get audio reaction to work with form. Of course, remember to play around with the setting so you can, you know, get interesting looks. This is just one way. I decided to make my audio reaction a sphere based shape, but you can make it a triangle, a rectangle, a diamond, whatever you want to do. Just play around with the settings in form. Don't copy this exact settings parameters because, you know, you want to take what you learn in this video tutorial and incorporate it and make something unique and different. So go ahead. I encourage you to experiment with this. Go into form, play around with the settings, apply shine, maybe apply star glow. I don't have star glow right now, but you can try to apply star glow on there and, you know, see how it works out. Apply different plugins, you know, maybe make particular in the background as little particles flying around or little bits of dust, you know, get creative. So that's essentially the basic core on how to set up form to audio react with your audio layer. Now, another quick tip is that if you go to form by default and go up to the animation presets, Form has a whole bunch of audio reaction presets that I didn't really know about until recently. We have, I think, about 10 of these TF audio, you know, different kind of form presets to work and look visually pleasing for audio reaction. And I think um, the TF audio blue thing right here, this preset right here, was used or modified by Andrew Kramer using his pro scores. Because if you look at his audio preview promo or teaser, you see this... Um, preset right here and set to the side the right side of the animation and it's modified a bit but it looks very similar so check that out tf audio blue thing it's one of the presets that come with form and keep in mind that i'm not using the the newest version of form the latest version of form i'm actually using a pretty old version of form so you know you can use it with almost anything so just check it out i highly encourage you to mess around with form right now thanks for watching guys check out my other video tutorials on xvs productions and on my website at vincentwin.com thanks for watching leave a comment response below and please leave um you know video requests to see what you want me to create tutorials because again i do run out of ideas so just keep that in mind thanks for watching guys you guys are great for all the support and thanks for watching guys